Are you still using static Excel references inside your formulas? Something like A1 to A1000? Well, stop. There's a much better way to make dynamic references inside of your formulas. Let's take a look. So last week, I created a video that talked about utilizing the Excel filter function to eliminate the need of copying and pasting data from a master list into sublists or multiple sublists. Open in front of you, I got the same example file that I used last week. It's called employee projects hyphen zero one. And inside of here, I've got a master list, project name, employee name, and department. Then off to the right, I've got four little headers that are gonna represent the different projects that are pulled from this list. And now I wanna get the employees for each of those projects. Now the filter function's great, love it. It's gonna filter the list, give me back just the employees for a specific project. Again, eliminating the need of copying data from one list into a sub list. Well, I got a lot of great feedback about that video, but I got a question that I wanna address here. I wanna make that formula more dynamic. Give you an example. If somebody goes to my master list and they go to add an additional project with the new employee and so on, that initial formula utilizing a static reference will not update. I'll have to go to the formula and adjust the range to include the new rows that are added to the list. Take a look. If I jump into E2, I'll say equals filter. There's my filter function. I'm gonna go grab the B2 down to B32. And if I look at my formula, we've got a static reference. So if somebody adds a record to this list later on, my formula only goes to 32. It's not gonna go to 33 and 34 and 35 and 36 and so on. It's gonna stop at 32. I wanna make that more dynamic. Well, in steps, an Excel table. By utilizing an Excel table, we use a table name that represents the entire table. And within that table name, we can then reference specific columns that make up that table. So now, no matter what happens, if the table increases in size or people delete records, our references and our formulas we'll always update and see all of the data. Now let's try this out. So I'm gonna click into my list, really doesn't matter where, just anywhere in that list. And then I'm gonna press a shortcut key. I'm gonna use Control T, like table. This will open up the Create Table window. It's grabbing A1 to C32, that's my entire list. And my header, my table does have headers. Project name, employee name, department. I'll hit okay. And now my list has been formatted as an Excel table. And I know this because I can see the table design tab and on the left, I've got a table name. And I'm gonna change the name. I'm gonna call this TBL projects and I'll hit my enter key. Now that name is how I'm gonna reference this data inside of my formulas. Take a look. So first I'm gonna get rid of all my headers here. I'm gonna rebuild it using table references. So I'll delete those out. I'm gonna go into E1. And here I wanna get all of the project names from the project column. And I wanna put them into a row here, just as headers. So I'm actually gonna use two functions. I'll say equals transpose. This will be the first one. Essentially, we wanna get all of the project names, all the unique project names from this column, but then transpose that column into a row. Now, the transpose function takes one argument, it's the array, it wants to know where the data is at that you wanna transpose. So here, I'm gonna use the unique function. Again, grab that column, but if you look closely here, we're now referencing the table name, TBL projects, bracket, project name. We're referencing that column rather than a static range. I'll close the parentheses, hit my enter key. Oh, missing, we're missing a closing parentheses because I didn't close it for the transpose, that's okay. 
it closed it for me. Actually, it did not, so I will close it, and I'll hit my Enter key. And now I've got all of my headers. Done. Beauty. Check this out. If I go down to the bottom of my lists and I add a new one, let's see, I get Project Horizon. I'm going to hit my Tab key, and if you look at my headers, I've now got Project Horizon. And let's finish this off. Let's say we got Mickey, and Mickey's part of the HR team. All right. So now we got all the projects there, and it doesn't matter. Somebody could add more records. They could delete records. They could add whatever they want, and our headers will update automatically, all utilizing the table reference for the column. Now let's take this a step further. So now I'm going to jump into E2, and I want to get the employees back. Now, if you didn't watch last week's video, take a look up above. I'll put a link right there. And you can see how we did this utilizing the filter function using static references. But now we got a table reference, even better. So here I'll say equals filter. I'm gonna open the parentheses. First thing it wants to know is the array that we're pulling the data from. So I'm gonna grab from B2 down to B33, the end of that list. But if you look, it's pulling out the employee name column. Now I am gonna make an adjustment here, and this is a bit different than utilizing static references. This employee name, I need to make it absolute, so that as I copy this formula to the right, it'll always look at the employee name column. Now to do this, I'm actually gonna wrap this inside of another square bracket, and then outside of the closing square bracket, I'm going to do a colon, open square bracket, and get the employee name again. And I'm going to close the bracket and close the bracket a second time. So now we've got kind of nested column references in there, but just for the employee name. This is an absolute table reference. This way it won't change as you copy the formula. So I'm going to, you got that done? I'm going to do a comma. Next thing it wants to know is what do we want to include? What are we filtering? So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to get the project name, A2 to A33. That pulls in the project name. But once again, I need to make it absolute. So bracket, colon, bracket, get the project name, close the bracket, close the bracket. And now I want to make sure that that's equal to this project atlas. So I'll click into there. Got E1, I need to make the row reference absolute. So F4, got the dollar signs in there, but I only want it for the one. So I'm gonna hit F4 again, and I got the E relative, dollar sign one for the absolute. And that's it. I'll close the parentheses. I'm done with the filter function. I'll hit my enter key. And there's all the employees for Project Atlas. And I'm gonna copy that over and I've got them all for each of the projects and all of the employees. And if somebody adds a new project, let's just be really generic here, new project, and this is Daisy. Daisy's part of the HR, IT team. I'll have my enter key. So now that I've got Daisy there, I just need to grab the Mickey formula, the last one there, and just copy it over, and there's Daisy and any other employees associated with that project. So taking the filter function, which is great, and making it more dynamic by utilizing table references instead of static references. Try it out. With just a quick tweak to our Excel references within our formulas, utilizing table references instead, we can make our formulas that much more dynamic. We don't have to go back in and adjust any formula references when somebody adds or deletes or changes anything about the table. So make sure you try this out. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you learned something new here, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. I appreciate that. YouTube appreciates that. Let them know that you enjoyed the video and you want more content like this. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get updates about new videos that we add to this channel each week on Microsoft Excel and other Office applications. I'll see you 
in the next video.